This video is on redundancy and high availability concepts. There are several terms you should know as network admin regarding redundancy and high availability. First, we have RTO and RPO. RTO or recovery time objective is the maximum amount of time that the process or service is allowed to be down and the consequences still considered acceptable. Beyond this time, the break in business continuity is considered to affect the business negatively. Recovery point objective RPO is the maximum time in which transactions could be lost from a major incident. How much you're willing to walk away from in order to get everything up and running again. Both RTO and RPO have to be balanced in coming up with policy for how to deal with incidents. Then we have MTBF and MTTR. Know that every piece of equipment can be rated in terms of mean time between failures and mean time to recovery. MTBF is the measurement of anticipated or predicted incidence of failure of a system or component between inherent failures, whereas MTTR is the measurement of how long it takes to repair a system or component after a failure occurs. Then we have active-active and active-passive. When it comes to high availability, solutions fall into these two types of approaches. Active Active High Availability Cluster is one of the two most frequently used high availability cluster configurations. They normally consist of minimum of two nodes that are running identical services or workloads at the same time. Active Active High Availability Cluster distributes workloads evenly across a set of nodes to provide load balancing. That way one node is not overloaded and response time are improved. Different type of load balancing algorithms such as round robin can be used to assign clients to active nodes. In active-passive, not all nodes are active. If there are two nodes in an active-passive cluster, one will be active and running a service or other workload. While the second node that is identical to the first node is in standby, ready to take over if active node encounters an issue. All clients are served by active nodes in an active-passive cluster, while no clients are sent to passive. Redundancy and availability can be contracted with multiple ISPs to create diverse paths and make sure you can stay up in the event an ISP experiences a failure. You can also use redundancy with routers through the use of Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol and First Hop Redundancy Protocol. Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol is used to automatically assign routers to host. It creates virtual routers that acts as a group. The default gateway on a host is configured to the virtual router rather than a physical router. And so if the physical router fails, a redundant choice is already built into the group. First top redundancy protocol is used to prevent network failure at a default gateway. And this is achieved by configuring multiple routers with the same IP address and MAC address, thus presenting an illusion of a single virtual router to the host in a LAN. The IP address of a virtual router is configured on all hosts in that network or subnet as a default gateway. It is a hub redundancy protocol that is designed to provide redundancy to the gateway router. Lastly, we have cold, warm, hot, and cloud sites. Think of these as a backup building or offices that can be used when a disaster occurs. These sites fall into these categories. What company chooses will depend on their business types and the funding they have. Generally, cold sites are used by organizations that can weather the storm for a day or two before they get back up and running. Hot recovery sites represents the ultimate in fault tolerance strategies. Hot recovery sites includes everything from phone systems with connected phone lines, data networks also in place, with necessary routers and switches as well as desks and PCs. Simply put, it's something that can be turned on within a few hours. The hot site can become fully functional and get business running. Basically think of cold as just an empty building and hot as fully loaded building. And sitting between the hot and cold is the warm side. Warm size has equipment like computers, but it is not configured and ready to go. This means that the data might need to be upgraded or other manual interventions might be needed to get the network operational again. One of the newer sites being marketed is a cloud site, similar to warm site. It is available when needed, but it needs configurations. The difference between CloudSide and WarmSide is that WarmSide is dedicated to the company while CloudSide is controlled by a provider.